You're listening to Kerry Today with Jerry O'Sullivan. Keep your views and comments coming into us in the program on 0667-123-666. You can text us on 083-300-3300 or you can email Kerry today at Radio Kerry. Ie. Still to come on the show, we'll be getting the word from Mayo ahead of the All-Ireland Senior Football Championship uh, semi-final and we'll be hearing uh, more details about that and we will in fact get the word from Mayo now because uh, Mark Thor is the man who runs the Mayo fan blog along with a number of others, Mayo Club 51. Uh, it's been running for the last number of years and I suppose has been chronicling the journey that this Mayo team and these Mayo supporters have been on and I spoke to him this morning about that journey and just how Mayo are shaping up um, for Sunday. For myself and uh, four other friends of mine, uh, Anne-Marie Flynn, Aidan Conway, Robert Bashford, Michael Mayo, we set up, uh, it's essentially a blog, um, first and foremost, and I suppose we've been using it to uh, to try and drum up um, support for the team, whether that's, you know, um, vocal or uh, visual. So, you know, we've uh, we've organised um, uh, flag design, so on and so forth, and uh, you know, just general fan information on the blog as well. Michael is pretty good at the uh, the old um, information for fans going to uh, whether it's Dublin, Limerick, Cork. You know, parking information, accommodation, so so on and so forth. So. I suppose, to put it simply, it's just a, a blog for fans by fans. Oh, yeah, very good. So, like, you've been documenting, I suppose, the journey that Mayo Football and this this particular team, I suppose, and its supporters have been on over the last number of years. You must have gone to every ground in Ireland, particularly, I suppose, this summer, uh, uh, and even last year, really, in in your quest and getting all the way down to the final, semi-finals or finals, year after year. It's been some journey. Yeah, look, we, we've we've covered some distance. Like we put some mileage on the clock. Um, I suppose the, our group started around 2013 after after we lost to Dublin in the final uh, the first time. And uh, you know we've uh, we've been up and down the country, whether it's been to Limerick to Dublin, you know New York across the Atlantic, you know London um, for championship games and then league as well. You know, in fairness, the, the male following is is huge in the league, and even even you would have seen yourselves in Tralee this year. Um, there was a massive male following down there yeah. last year. Oh, that doesn't matter. Male fans are going to travel in big numbers. Yeah. And look, we, we were talking this morning about um, the last time we met in the championship and 2014, the drawn game in Crow Park, and then that game in Limerick that I don't think anyone will ever forget. Yeah. Well, you know, I mean, a, a lot of people, I suppose, this side of the country would like to forget us. It. It's. Uh, it's it's a bit of a blur to be honest. That game, it was uh, both games. Even they, they were so they were so hectic. They were so intense, and you know they had everything. You know, it's it's uh, it does feel like that for us. It feels like the one that really got away. Yeah. You know, yes, you, you ask any male fan, you know what 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 their worst memory is, and I, I'd say ninety percent of them would say Limerick two thousand and fourteen was really? the one that hit the hardest. And uh, you know, it, we'll never forget the journey on the way home and and getting the text, the phone calls that that James Horn had stepped down, and that was that was a kick in the stomach as well because you know we feel James really really dragged us from the doldrums uh, from 2011 onwards. And uh, in fairness, Tom, look, he he brought male football to life, and uh, you know here we are today. I suppose you know a lot, a lot of that lies on on James's shoulders. Yeah, a lot of that journey was started, and, and these players they they keep coming back every year. For more every year, Mark, they're written off. Well, that was Mayo's chance. Now this team will start to break up, and will fellas keep going on the road? But it's a remarkable testament to the commitment there. That you know, back in another All Ireland semi final yet again. Yeah, it's 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 quite incredible. And even even sitting up in Salt Hill this year after losing to Galway, you thought you know we've lost twice in a row now to Galway. Is this it? You know, is, is, have have uh, have we emptied the tank? But look. Shame on us for thinking that for even a second, to be honest. That that's the most resilient group of footballers uh, that I've ever seen, anyway, it's from this part of the country. And uh, you know, they always come back for more. And uh, even though we did stutter through the qualifiers, you know, we 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 stared death in the face a few times against Derry, against Cork, uh, the Rossies then in the quarter final. You know, they, they put a they put a serious performance together in the replay, and that it just felt like you know that that's the male we know and love, and that's the. That's the Mayo that we know are capable of putting that kind of a performance together and, you know, hopefully more the same on Sunday. Yeah, and look, the top four teams really in the country are in the semi-finals, it's fair to say. But Mayo, Dublin and Kerry have been the top three teams in the country for the last five or six years. So kind of fitting that that's the case. And that means, like, how do you view the game on Sunday? It's, it's to many people's eyes, it's got to be 50-50. 
Yeah, well, I suppose it depends who you talk to. You know, it's uh, there, there's a lot of people down here. Like, I mean, you ask you ask twenty Mayo fans, and every one of them will give you a different opinion. There's some people are confident. Some people think we're going to put 2014 right. Other people think no, we just don't have enough what it takes to be Kerry. Uh, like Kerry, have got a, a probably the best inside line in the country. You know, a lot of talk about what are Mayo going to do about John Hay, but you know, we obviously can't forget about players like uh, O'Donoghue and and Ganey and. You know, it, 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 could, it could go either way the next day. I do expect it to be tight. Uh, it depends what kind of game we bring. You know, we, we, we are liable to play a, a kind of a, a slower, lateral, uh, more patient game. Um, and we're also capable of the, the explosive running game that you saw against uh, Riscarman and over yeah. the last number of years. So it, it, it depends what, what mayor we're going to bring, I suppose. Um, it, look, it's, it's all to play for it. I know that's a cliche, but it's really hard to say. Uh, there'll only be a point to in it by the end in my yeah. opinion I don't think uh, I don't think it's going to swing uh, further either way Did you think Mark that this year was going to be scuffled before it started because of that interview that was given by form, the former managers and talks of egos in the dressing room and then comments from pundits about Aidan O'Shea and what he should or shouldn't be doing with selfies and the attitude of this squad and the team and certain key players that there seemed to be a media storm before there was a ball kicked in the season Ah, uh, yeah, well, look, look, uh, I suppose the worst thing, uh, the, the, the only thing worse than not being talked about, or being talked about is not being talked about. Uh, there seems to be an obsession about, particularly Aidan O'Shea, where it got, it got to ridiculous levels where he was criticised for taking selfies with, with, with football fans, you know. And I know I know some uh, some me journalists might say, uh, might like the fact that male footballers are getting that kind of attention, but you know, look, they need to look after their own uh, their own end of things. There, uh, male football is not in a good place right now, so maybe they need to look closer to home. And um, you know, look, that kind of stuff is water off a duck's back for them boys. You know, they've they've heard it all, they've been through it all. They, they know they know what they need to do uh, to prepare for big championship games. So, look, I, I said there was absolutely uh, no chance that either the interview uh, or or the, the media storm, it was going to have no effect on Mayo whatsoever. Yeah, Stephen Rashford has the team coming right at the right time. He's going to be picking his team, obviously tonight, along with the Kerry team, but talk that we won't know the real side until just before kickoff, or possibly and uh, just before throw-in, I should say. Yeah, I mean, I think I think I remember, I think there's only been one game where, where the team that uh, Stephen named actually, actually started. Uh, I can't remember what that game was, but... Look, we, we'll be taking the team selection with a pinch of salt. Um, it, it, it will give us a guide as to, as to you know, what they're thinking. And it is it is always just a, it's a focal point in the week with, with the team to be named, just to break up the week. I suppose everyone's very excited about Sunday. Yeah. And, uh, you know, we, we'll, we'll, uh, we'll look forward to it anyways. It's, it's supposed to be named tonight. We, we will pro- probably hear by about nine o'clock. And that'll get, uh, that'll get plenty of debate going. No, no truth to the rumour that Lee McHale has been brought back in for Kieran Donaghy. Oh, you never know. You never know. I mean, like, anything is possible at this stage. Well, they're two basketballers, so, you know, it might be an even battle. Well, that's true. That's true. Look, uh, Liam hasn't, uh, hasn't played in a few years, but look, I'm sure, I'm sure given the call, he'd be more than willing. Well, Mark, look, thanks very much for taking time to talk to us and give us the word from Mayo. And look, um, enjoy Sunday. Thanks, Jerry. God bless you. Thanks, Mark. That's Mark Toher there, who is uh, with Club 51, which is the Mayo Online Fans and Supporters blog. And they have been on some journey, that's for sure, over the last number of years and even this year to the qualifiers. Someone said to me this morning, Kerry's third game, uh, fourth game in the championship uh, is on um, Sunday and Mayo's eighth game in the championship is on Sunday. Um, We'll see what happens. It should be interesting. We're going to get the word and a view on how Kerry might line up. We'll get to that with Killian Burns next. It's Kerry Today with Jerry O'Sullivan. Keep your views and comments coming into us on the programme. A listener says, best of luck to the Kerry Seniors and Vimeo on Sunday. Please give a mention to the Kerry Miners against Cavan on Sunday also. A few of my past pupils are on the minor team and I'm so proud of them and their achievements. Haven't all the Kerry teams given us a great season of sports? We're all Ireland winning juniors to the other 17 minors to next Sunday's games. Life wouldn't be the same without them, says Margaret Brosnan. And uh, another few comments coming in on the Rose of Tralee. Best of luck to Breed O'Mahony, the Kerry Rose from Tim, Sheila and the boys in the Bower in Ratmore up Kerry and another listener says till the day I die I don't ne- know where Mayo get their confidence from well then say what you like 
they are definitely one of the top three teams in the country in the last five years. The statistics show it. They've been in All Ireland finals. They've lost by a point in those All Ireland finals. Kick of a ball, um, uh, the break of a ball really has all been that's separated them from Dublin and from Kerry over the last number of years and from All Ireland glory. We'll talk a bit more about Kerry now and how we're shaping up. I've got Killian Burns, former Kerry footballer, on the line. Killian, good morning to you. Hey, Jerry. Lots of talk about what sort of a team that Eamon Fitzmaurice is going to line out with tonight. There's been an, a huge concentration on who, how Mayo are going to handle Kieran Donaghy, but we have our own questions to answer as well. A lot of people pointing to possible changes in the, in the wing forward line. Yeah, well, I, I mean, in terms of a, a winning team, you wouldn't want to tinker with it too much. Um, they've been fairly cruising through the championship. And they haven't been. They haven't been tested. Um, I suppose we're we do have plenty flair up front, really, Jerry. You know, we we've plenty to choose from. It's about getting the right mix of of um, of of players up there, and may, maybe not not as spoiled for choice. Maybe in defence, and there's there's still that kind of a bit of um, chopping and changing of the midfield area. So I suppose it's far from ideal to have a. A team where you can't definitely name it hand on heart, but um, I suppose you know Johnny Buckley is coming back into the fray, and you'd imagine he's got such a great engine that he would be be playing a role. Um, you know the things for them to consider. I suppose I suppose Lee Keegan is a is a huge player for for Mayo. Like yeah, he'll he really definitely has. start coming back in for Mayo. You'd imagine. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it sounds it sounds like I mean you couldn't really do without the likes of Lee Keegan if if Mayo wants to progress. And I suppose he's just kind of gone to that next level. Really, you know, he's kind of um, he's one of those players that can really make things happen. And uh, he's got all the skill sets. He can score goals if he gets his chance. He can pop over a point. And it's I suppose in the, the kind of semi-final stage you need something if you need that type of a player and I suppose then maybe that just poses a question as to you know would you would you put a Paul Murphy kind of man marking him even from the yeah we seem to have just lost our connection with Killian Burns Sorry. momentarily yeah Killian can you hear me yeah yes you were, you were saying do we put it like they're talking about maybe a man marker on Kieran Donahue are we asking the same questions about Lee Keegan yeah, I mean that's probably where you're coming from, and it's probably an, a, a possible option of, of Murphy, Paul Murphy, taking on that role. We all know he's capable of doing it, uh, and All Ireland finally got you know man the match, and uh, he's well capable of, capable of, of doing that. Lee Keegan is a threat, and uh, if you can sacrifice one player to actually really just just stay with him, but you know I'm not sure if Eamon is going to take that kind of a chance. Ultimately, Lee Keegan is a defender, and your first role is to defend. And if you can get a forward on you that's going to cause you trouble and get you kind of thinking as a defender first, then you know hopefully he won't have he won't have too many opportunities then to to make a mark you know on the offensive. In the run up to these games, a narrative usually takes over Killian, and the narrative kind of is that from the quarterfinals and from the quarterfinal that uh, replay that Mayo had that they have strong strike runners and that they're going to run at Kerry and expose um, questions and ask questions like Galway did without finishing in goals. Is that going to happen, do you think, or is this an over-concentration on that one aspect of the game? No, I would say they were, I'd say Kerry would be definitely hugely focused in on, on that. Like, I mean, they, we know they play that kind of a running game. Um, they, you know... <sighs> Any kind of a running game like Mayo play, you know, will put any the best defenders in the country on edge. You know, when you have lads coming at you twos and threes, and you know, as a defender, as a carry defence, you're you're you, you just don't feel in control. You know, you're looking at the ball, you're looking to where to see your man is, and you know that's when goals can definitely leak. And I think that's um, that's something that they'll no doubt consider. You know, what is the the role of each defender in that regard. Are they going to pack out her defence a little bit? You know, what's the role of Tyg Morley? But I mean, it's certainly one of the areas that I think I wouldn't be hugely comfortable. Yeah. Um, it, and you know, when you're kind of on the back foot and you're backing back and you've got lads running at you and they just, I mean, they've proven it now in the Roscommon game when you've got the likes of Keith Higgins and 
these guys coming up and scoring yeah, goals. They can and cause you trouble. They can cause you trouble. Yeah. Killian, we're out of time. We're going to have to leave it there, but thanks a million for giving us your view. It's going to be a fascinating encounter on Sunday, both the minor and senior games. That's Killian Burns there. Don't forget the Radio Kerry and Garvey's Super Value team are out on the road. Remember to say that Garvey's is super if they knock on your door. Stay tuned for more details on that right across the day here. My thanks to the team to put the programme together. I'll talk to you Monday morning. Stay tuned for Francis and the 11 to 1 Club. Best week.